Hello everyone, Seraphin here, and welcome back for more Mega Man X. And let's jump right back into it. We just finished up Spark Mandrill last time, who is an absolute massive pain in my butt, but we're moving on to one of my favorite Mavericks. Not quite as cool as Storm Eagle, but pretty close. Armored Armadillo. I was a massive fan of this guy when I was a kid, and still am to that, for the, to that matter, but he's a little bit different. We'll see about that when we get there. That being said, uh, out of all of the uh, stage themes for this game, I'm not as big of a fan of his when compared to everybody else's. I don't know what it is, I just don't really like this one all that much. And uh, I actually have a... Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Overclocked Remix or OCR. It's a lot of fan-made remixes of classic game music. But I have an entire album of music from the X series of, of fan-made music from the series, and it's all phenomenal. But there's a couple of remixes of Armored Armadillo's level, and even the remixes aren't all that good in my opinion. So, unfortunately, I'm just not a fan of this, this theme. I don't know what it is. But anyway, moving on. So here we're fighting in a mine, and we get this big giant tank-looking thing here. Which is... I'm just going to let him go ahead and jump out of the way. You can kill this thing, but it takes a lot of firepower to kill. And it's really not worth it right now. But I'll let him go, because behind him, where he came out of, is another energy tank. Or the sub-tank, I should say. And he'll, he's just going to keep on going, digging big old swaths of dirt out of the way, making a path. And then we hear him blow up. And you're like, wait, what? What killed him? Well, that's because he got to the end of his digging route here. And if we had killed him, by the way, we could get those health upgrades up there, but I didn't do it. He kind of fell in this pit of spikes over here and blew up. And that's what happened to him. So, he, whether you kill him or not, he's going to he's gonna blow up eventually. It's no big deal. Uh, that being said, there is a reason to want to blow those things up, besides getting those health upgrades. And we'll actually see another one soon, and I'll show you that. There is a much easier way to kill them, and we have the method of doing that, and I will show you that when we get there. At any rate, we're just kind of going through a big old mine shaft here, so... Um, something I wanted to talk a little bit about is the mechanics changes from one of the installments to the next, and what's different about the X-Series when compared to the original Mega Man. So, um, I have said already, I'm not very good at the original Mega Mans. I've beaten a couple of them. Specifically, I've beaten Mega Man 4, I've beaten Mega Man 7. I think I've beaten Mega Man 2, I don't remember. Anyway, but I'm not great at them, and honestly, I prefer the X games more anyway. I could ride on that thing, by the way, but I choose not to. Um, I just, I find the X games more engaging, and they're also quite a bit darker, too, honestly. Like, the original Mega Man's very lighthearted and fun because, well, they didn't really have the ability to make it look any different on the NES. You know, all the colors are really bright and vibrant, and there's some really cool-looking levels and everything, but, I mean, there's a much more dour theme to the X games than there is with the original Mega Man, so. Anyway, besides that... Obviously, you saw Mega Man X has the ability to, like, kick off the sides of walls and climb on top of them, or climb up them, like this. Obviously, the original Mega Man could not do that. Um, a lot of that, I think, had to do with limitations of the console. But I'll talk about that in a second. So you see, I have three full sub-tanks, only one's missing. And we're about to encounter another one of those digging tank things, so we're going to equip the Fire Wave. Because this thing packs a ton of punch. And we actually, like, outright blow this tank up in just a little bit of time. He barely gets into his digging route before he's done. Sadly, he doesn't drop any power-ups or anything, but we wanted to kill him this time because there's something he would make it... In, uh, something he would make inaccessible if we didn't. And that is the heart container right here. If we let him dig through here, he would have messed up a lot of the dirt up here and we couldn't reach this. So, that's why I killed that one. The first one is, little, is like, of little consequence, apart from those power pickups, but we didn't need them anyway, so... Anyway, uh, something else different. So that's different with uh, this one. I need to write on, by the way, to get to the boss. I'm just gonna shoot some lemons ahead of time here, because the frame rate slows down quite a bit here, even on my emulator. I don't know if it does this on the actual console itself. I haven't seen that in a while, but anyway, shoot some birds, jump off at the last minute, and grab this power up. Anyway, um, let's talk. Let's talk about armor a little actually, real quick, because we're about to go fight him anyway. I'm sorry, like I said, I don't have a lot of time to talk about mechanics between all the stuff I'm trying to show you guys. Actually, I'd like, you don't want to have a charge shot for this guy. I'll explain why in a second. So here comes Armored Armadillo himself. He's covered, as his name implies, in armor. Imagine that. 
And as a result of him being covered in armor, he's actually very hard to inflict damage on. And I can't really get a shot in edgewise with the uh, constant little head laser beams he's shooting out here. I can kind of lock him into a pattern here if I can stand here. Oh, jeez, that's why. That's why you don't want to fire charge shots of Armored Armadillo. He absorbs them and shoots them back at you. Which is not fun. Well, he doesn't quite shoot them back. He shoots energy back at you. What you want to do is just use your lemons and hit get hits in where you can. He will deflect most of them, because that's what he does. He's just covered in armor and blocks all of them. But occasionally, you'll sneak a shot in. And that's when you can get some damage in on him. But when he's just on the ground like that, he's constantly shooting that head laser beam. And it's really hard to get in between those shots because he fires them so quickly. So you just kind of kind of keep firing lemons and hope they get in. And then try to dodge the head blasts when you can. And then when he starts doing that rolling thing again, then you have to get out of the way. Because you actually can't hurt him while he's doing that either. You can hurt him right as he's getting into it or right when he's getting out of it, but not while he's doing it because he's just encased in armor. I guess you can knock him out of it. I guess I never noticed that before. Anyway... Strategy with him is just firing lemons. All the lemons. And jump over his head shots. You'll get shots in every once in a while, but he's kind of tedious to fight otherwise. That wasn't too bad. Uh, by the way, he's a little tedious to fight in that form, but if you have his weakness, the electric spark, which I do, um, if you fire an electric spark at him and you hit him with it, it actually knocks all of his armor off. And then he's just armadillo. He's not armored anymore. And you can hit him no matter what. You can hit him while he's rolling. You can hit him between all of his shots. You can fire charge shots at him because he can't do the absorption thing anymore. And now we get Rolling Shield, which fires blue medicine balls. <laughs> anyway, that's actually very useful when it's charged up. We'll talk about that more later. All right, so moving on, we are going to progress on to one of my least favorite bosses, sadly enough. And that is going to be Mr. Launch Octopus. Uh, I don't even like his level. His level is the worst. I, in fact, I would argue that I hate his level more than I hate fighting him. And that's really saying something. But uh, we'll, I'll talk about that in a minute when, as we get into it. This is a long level, by the way, too. This is going to be the last boss we fight in this chapter. So you see we're on a beach starting out. There's a lot of water, yada yada. And turtles, because of course there's turtles on the beach, right? And we got these little skips, that little bugs that skip across the water here. Kind of fun. And now we start diving into the water. And we got seahorses. I love seahorses. Anyway. So some of the things that are also different between the original Mega Man and X. Besides the ability that I... Besides the fact that I can climb up walls by kicking off of them and stuff. Um, X is designed a little bit differently, as you can obviously tell, but... Uh, he can he can charge up the Maverick weapons with the Buster Arm upgrade, which the original Mega Man could not do. This is one of the mini bosses. It's a submarine. It looks like an anglerfish that shoots little eel things out at you. What it also can do is activate that thing on the front of its face and actually uh, alter the currents of the water and either pull you in towards it or push you away from it. And uh, we'll be seeing that again in a moment, and that's even more annoying. These things just eat, swallow you whole, but you can shoot your way out of them. They actually draw you in, too, when you're close. Anyway, um, I'm actually having a hard time thinking about some of the other mechanics, but anyway. Um, it does away with this stupid nonsense here. He pulls you in right away, and there's spikes all over the place, and I'm not a fan. So you just kind of lay into him as you have the chance to. And I just like to stay on the edge here and dash away from him, because that's what he does, is pulls you in toward the spikes. Like, all the time. And then just get your hits in where you can, between him doing that. And keep the dashing going. You could stay on the middle platform, I guess, and keep dashing, but then you run the risk of dashing off the left side and wanting into the spikes anyway. And uh, that has happened to me a lot, uh, many more times than I care to admit, so... At any rate. Um, I guess mechanics-wise, that's really where the differences end. I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of where a lot of the other ones, but... Uh, something you'll notice in the original Mega Mans, if you've played those, is... Mega Man does not have, quote-unquote, sub-tanks that he has to worry about refilling. He just picks up pre-filled energy tanks during the course of normal gameplay, and you can use those whenever you want, and that'll refill your health bar completely. But you don't need to charge them first. But they're also not reusable. 
Any of them that you collect and pick up, once you've used them, they're gone. And I guess you can have you can have quite a few of them, honestly, as far as I understand. I don't know if there's an upper limit to the number you can have, but... By the way, this whale thing that I just took out is totally optional. You don't need to kill this to progress. But you do need to kill it if you want to get into this room down here, because he breaks the floor underneath him. And what's in here, you might be asking? A bed of spikes and this thing. This is a big ol' eel thing. Big, big ol' eel robot. And uh, his entire middle section is armored and, un and invulnerable. So you need to shoot him either in his tail or in his face. Those are only two vulnerable points. Something that's fun to do is just sit on his back and shoot him in the face while he's doing this. You can kill him pretty quickly when you're doing this. Yep, there he goes. I gotta be careful because there's spikes down here. <laughs> I wasn't looking where I was going. Anyway, he blows up, and then by doing that, he opens this little pathway to the right here, and inside is the heart container. So that's that out of the way. And now we get to climb all the way back up to the top of this level and get back to where we were going, which was towards Launch Octopus. Uh, but that being said, so instead of having energy tanks like you had in the original Mega Man, you have sub-tanks instead. Um, every one of the Mega Man X games does the same thing. They have the refillable sub-tanks instead of the ones that you just get to use. Uh, that being said, this one, I think the first three Mega Man X games have four sub-tanks, but from there on, you only get two. But you also get something else. You get, um, you get a W tank, like a weapon tank, and what that will do is allow you to refill your uh, special weapon energy at any time you want. And I don't know, I think it completely refills one weapon. It might do all of them, I'm not sure. I actually don't use the thing that much. It's kind of situationally useful. There's very few instances where you need to worry about refilling your special weapon energy. But you also get a tank, it's, I think it's referred to as the EX tank in a lot of the later ones. It starts with X4. But all that does is whenever you get a game over and like you die and lose all your lives and have to do a game over and continue, you will start with four lives instead of two. That's all that does. And that's first seen in X4 and onward, I believe. At any rate, so here we have Launch Octopus. He's a, a jerk, let's put it that way. Uh, he's he's covered head to toe in ordnance, just missiles for days. And if I stand here and I can just keep firing lemons at him and get through the missiles, but then he fires those little fish things. And then he does this. This is a cyclone he's doing that's actually pulling me towards him. And if I get stuck in that and he descends on top of me, he'll actually like grab onto me and drain my life and refill his. It's incredibly annoying. And but there's I don't really know that there's a limit to him doing that, because the last time I got caught in that, it's been a while, I try I tend to avoid it, but if you get caught in that, he'll just keep sucking all your life away and refill his own bar. And as far as I know, he, he can kill you with it. He'll just drain all your life completely, and there's not a lot you can do about it. I don't know if, you know, pressing buttons or moving around makes it stop, but it, my experience is when I get caught in that, I'm dead. So avoid that at all costs, let's put it that way. And then all he does is fire missiles and fire those little homing fish at you. Uh, there is a neat trick to killing him. His weakness is the rolling shield, but it's very situationally useful because it's hard to get the rolling shield through his missile barrage and actually hit him with it. What you can use instead is Boomer Kawanger's weapon, which is the boomerang cutter. And if you use that on him enough, it actually cuts all of his tentacles off. And when you cut all of his tentacles off, he can't fire anything at you anymore. We get the, we get the, homi, the Horming Torpedo. Not the Homing Torpedo, the Horming Torpedo. I'm sure it's a mistranslation, but anyway. If you cut all of his tentacles off, he can't do the Cyclone Drain thing anymore, and he can't fire the little Seeker fish missiles. All he can do is fire the regular ones out from on either side of his face. And jump around, that's all he can do. So if you just stand at the same level as him and just keep firing lemons at you, he won't hit you. It's hilarious. Uh, you can also, by the way, you can cut off Flame Mammoth's trunk with the Boomerang Cutter, and then he can't fire the Tar Blasts out anymore. There's not really a lot of benefit to doing that, but... The Boomerang Cutter is actually arguably the most versatile Maverick weapon in this entire game. And we get it from the last Maverick we haven't fought yet, which is Boomer Kowanger. Uh, that being said, now that we have the ability to, we're going to do a little bit of backtracking. There's a couple of things I want to go grab, so... We will do that next time, and I'll talk some more about some more of this, the game mechanics and the history behind it. So until that time, 
Thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Until then, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.